I look at it, yes, I just kind of want to put Linux on it, but we're going to test it as it came with Windows. This is the Boss Game M5 AI Mini desktop. That's what it's called, the AI Mini, I don't know. M5 is what I'm just going to call it from now on, but it has the Ryzen AI uh, Max plus 395 amd every single time i'm going to remind you that your naming scheme is stupid turbo is up to 5.1 gigahertz and it has the new fastest ever integrated gpu the radeon 8060s i don't know how an integrated gpu is this fast we're talking like desktop gpu levels of fast i don't know why i said it that way we're going to keep it also we have 96 gigabytes of ddr5 it can go up to 128 you can get it in either configuration and this one comes with a two terabyte pci express 4.0 m.2 so take a look at this thing it's in a larger than most mini pcs metal case with plenty of ventilation and some rgb glow going on there in the front so what i'm going to do is kind of break down what we're looking at uh, we will talk about the specs but mostly it's going to be the you know, playing games and testing because that's what really matters <laughs> Before we do that, look at all my beautiful games. This is my PC game collection, but it's also a whole bunch of shirts that I'm going to be doing for 80, I don't know, 70, 80% off. Also, the hardware and the mouse pads. Use coupon code Happy Hardware, and you'll get 50% off that. I'm trying to clear up the shelves as much as possible. Now, these prices are only going to be for the stuff I have here on the shelf. There's a few things that are print on demand, like this one. Those prices will not be changing, but you can go on there and grab just all kinds of t-shirts. I got all kinds of good stuff left over there. I want more room for my games. Now, you're gonna have to pay a little bit of shipping, but if you grab multiple things, maybe some hardware, maybe some of these, well, that's gonna help a lot. Also, I've got a bunch of games I'm not taking with me, and some of them I've just got duplicates of. They're actually really good games. So I'll throw some of those into the boxes. If you order a few things and there's extra room in the box and it doesn't like, you know, cost me an extra several dollars, I'll throw some games in there. So I'll be giving away that. And I'm also going to be giving away random just stuff from the office that I don't need, little bits of hardware. And then the more premium hardware, I'm going to put on the used category over here. If you just come to epicpants.com and scroll down the page about halfway, you'll see there's a, a used category. I got microphones, handheld consoles, got a few copies of Windows on here. Look at that Windows 98 sealed in the box. The idea is I take care of you with some good sale prices and you take care of me by getting this stuff off my shelf so I have a little more room. Head over to epicpants.com and now on to our regularly scheduled program. So you can set this up horizontally, just put it on the desk. There's some rubber there on one side where you can just lay it down or you can stand it up by building a little stand with all the pieces that it comes with. Pretty easy. I'm going to keep mine standing up because the vertical is taking up less desktop real estate. So I like that. Real space, real space. Yes. The Radeon 8060S frequency on that's 2900 megahertz. For our wireless connectivity, we got Bluetooth 5.2, Wi-Fi 7. We also have 2.5 gigabit ethernet on the back. And then this will support four screens. I'll cover that when we look at all the ports and ins and outs. Remembering this is ridiculous. It's 8,000 megahertz. So yeah, this is some of the fastest DDR5 I've got to test yet. Now, one of the things that makes this like unique from the other mini PCs or a lot of the other mini PCs, we have a performance button and that allows you to choose like a nice compromise between silence, just completely quiet desktop use and power for, you know, driving games and doing rendering and stuff like that. So you've got three different modes. You've got mute mode, which is, it just lowers the power. And uh, we'll test all those power modes when we get into the testing. you got balance mode, which is getting up there close to performance mode. It does, the fans do ramp up. And then performance mode is just all the way out, you know, like full power and full fans. If you want to change the RGB, there's also a little spot on the side where you can just touch with your finger and it'll cycle through the different RGB modes. Uh, there, I couldn't figure out how to make it just one color, but you can cycle it on and off if you want to as well. Now, when I first looked at this case, I was like, okay, that's going to do a pretty decent job at moving the air around because you've got, you know, a metal case, metal top shell and all that. And there's like, they call them heat dissipation holes or just like slots where the heat's can dissipate. Um, it may also get a little bit of dust in there. So I would say every six months, you might want to just dust it off. A lot of times the more open cases do a better job when it comes to cooling, but they're also a little louder. So we'll see how that, let's go through the ports on the front. We've got our audio jack and that's headphone microphone combo. Then we have two USB 3.2. Those are 10 gigabits per second. We have USB 4 on the front. Then we have SDXC. That's the high performance SD card slot right there. And there's your performance mode switch. Power button. Yes. Flip it around the back. So we got two USB 2.0. Those are 480 megabits per second for all your peripherals and everything. We got an HDMI 2.1. That's 8K 60 Hertz supported there. 
Then we have DisplayPort, which also supports 8K 60Hz, and that's a full-size DisplayPort, not a mini or a USB-C. We have another USB 4.0. We have another USB 3.2. It's 10 gigabits per second. There's our 2.5 gigabit LAN port, and we have another audio jack on the back. Thanks very much for putting one on the back as well. If you want to run four monitors, you're going to have to plug up one uh, you know, USB 4 thing to the front. So there will be a cable coming out of the front if you're running four monitors. I think that's a kind of a minority use case, but you know, however you want to do it. All right, so if you want to get into the AI stuff, well, this will run Llama 3 2.2 times faster than a 40, what is it, a 4090? Yes, that's what they say. I'm not going to test that because I don't really like AI slop. I think it's kind of ruining the world, but you know what? I support your right as an individual to install and slop up things. You know, I've, at this point, slop it up so much that we have to regulate it. That's what I want. We're, we're an accelerationist for AI. So anyway, 126 tops is pretty crazy for a little PC like this. All right, so this is going to be kind of weird. I recorded this before. That's why you're seeing, you know, like this. I'm just going to skip through my old footage because the audio was really staticky. So our speeds with the M.2 are kind of like higher than most PCI Express Gen 3, but kind of low when it comes to PCI Express Gen 4. But these speeds were pretty consistent. So we got 4,000 megabytes on the read and 3592 on the right. And then, you know, the temperatures during all this, it got up to 63. That was the highest drive temperature three you can see like right over here but that doesn't bother me much at all that's this is really really nice and cool but it's also not extremely fast but it's going to feel plenty fast for most people games will load up in a matter of seconds instead of years like on the original playstation or one of those old games remember those things let's try out some games got a unreal engine uh four game right here this is witchfire i wanted to see how this one ran and i'm just going to run this one turned up look at all those stuffs this is a run on ultra just straight up. Yeah, we're getting 61 FPS here in this uh, 59. You see it's running really, really well. So this game is, uh, I guess, kind of a slightly grindy, what's the word for this? Not looter shooter, but uh, rogue, rogue light. But you are doing a lot of like putting together builds and you can pick from a number of different builds. I'm using the butcher here. And then you go through areas and, you know, upgrade. It's, I haven't gotten too far into it. I don't know, I just like, I really like the outdoor areas in this game. I think it's really pretty, so. Wanted to check it out and see how it ran, and it's running really well, and it looks so good. It's hard to believe that this is a mini PC. All right, next up, I wanted to try Street Fighter because that's notoriously difficult to play on a mini PC. In fact, the Steam Deck struggles with this on like 720p. So this one, I'm gonna just put it on the high quality. All right, so I'm just gonna uh, do a match here, and I'm pushing the random button, and look what it did. Yep, it knows that we want to see those summer outfits, so we'll give we'll give it to you all. So there's that, and uh, we're gonna do random on the second character as well. And, uh, yep, it, this is what it wants. God wants this to happen. All right, in-game, it looks really good. If you can take your eyes off for a minute and watch the graphics, it looks really good. And it runs, it's, they're capping it at 60 FPS in here. All right, so let's try out the world tour mode and check this out. We're getting 90 to 100 FPS running around nice shell here. Is that how you say it? I don't know. I forget, I haven't played this in a while. Yeah, we're getting some Really nice FPS here. The best I've ever seen on any mini PC. By the way, this is one of the best RPGs of the last few years, if you like RPGs. Let's move up as his leg. All right, how about some Baldur's Gate 3? So I'm gonna run this on Ultra, and we're just gonna see how it runs on Ultra. And yes, it's, you know, getting 80 to 100 FPS on the Ultra setting. Baldur's Gate 3. Now, when you're in the city, it might be getting somewhere between 30 and 50, but that's still better than a lot of desktop GPUs. So yeah, Baldur's Gate 3, Game of the decade, in my opinion. Uh, totally playable. And you that also allows you to decide if you want to use FSR or not. You can leave it off. All right, Cyberpunk, let's try ray tracing medium and see how this runs with some ray tracing on a mini PC. All right, so ray tracing medium, 56.23 FPS. Never dropped below 48.4. So you can play this with ray tracing on this machine. Note, I did have AMD, F, uh, whatever the FSR turned on. It was set on the auto setting, but still, we've got you know ray tracing going on here. Let's go ahead and try it on the ultra setting as well. So if you want to do no ray tracing, but just run it on ultra, which I actually like the way it looks on ultra quite a bit. I don't know if I like it better than ray tracing, probably, but yeah, that's me. So on ultra, we're getting 98.38 FPS. Again, the fastest score I've seen on a mini PC and a minimum of 76.1. All right, let's check out superposition. So uh, are you getting tired of hearing this? this? Is the fastest I've seen on a mini PC. We've got a score of 17 for 79. Average 130.74 FPS on the 1080p medium, minimum of 94.49. Let's also try the 4K Optimized, shall we? 4K Optimized, our score is 78.40, an average 58.65, minimum 49.69.
So still really fast on the 4K setting. Eurigen Valley. All right, 210.3 FPS, score 87.99. Minimum 53.6. This is a stupid high score. 210, that's ridiculous. Let's take a look at Cinebench right here. And it's just, like I said, this is a stupid fast CPU. It's going to be faster than, look at that. It's faster than some of the Threadrippers out there. The single core score, 2041. And the multi-core, 32488. And then when it comes to Geekbench, our single core is 2864. And our multi-core is 17387. I'll scroll down here so you can see all the individual test scores. How's it all doing? That looks good. Yes. How's that clang? Good. All right, now let's take a look at our OpenCL. Oh, there it clang. Mm -hmm. Our OpenCL score, 103,377, highest I've seen on a mini PC by far. That's ridiculous. All right, let's scroll down and take a look at those individual test scores. All right, let's see how hot it gets. I'm gonna let this run for a little while. A to 64 here, and you'll see how hot and loud it is. All right, in my room, it's 43.4 decibels. Now let's put this in front of the machine and just see how loud it is compared to the room. And it is 50.4 decibels. So yeah, you can definitely hear this when it's on performance mode, but if you are watching a movie or something or doing something that's playing an indie game, just crank it down, you won't hear it at all. As far as the CPU heat goes, this is really nice and cool. So after doing a test for quite a while, it never got hotter than 73.5. It's really, really cool. Boss game, if we had a fan curve, because right now you can go into the UEFI and you can cycle through all these different fan modes, but they're all just setting it to a static thing. Like I put it on 20, put it on 40, put it on whatever. And that does not work very well. And the reason is, is if I put it on 20, the machine gets too hot just doing anything. This is on 20%. I wanted to see if I could do anything on 20%. And just after a matter of five minutes, we're already hitting temperatures of 96.5. So 20% is not okay. And then even when I decided to, you know, run some benchmarks and then monitor the temperatures, yep, it's right up there, 94 degrees while running Unigen Valley. Not doable at 20%. You can't hear it, but it's gonna, you know, fry eggs and stuff. If I put it on 40, then it's already loud enough that it bothers me. So I feel like we need something that allows it to kind of like go up to a certain point, like a fan curve, instead of just saying like, put it on auto or put it on static. Give us a fan curve and I'll bake you a cake the next time I'm in your neck of the woods. Do a quick tour here in hardware info. There you can see the CPU 16 cores, 32 threads, they're all big. And we have uh, 64 uh, megs in total is two little pieces of L3 cache. 64 megs in total. There's our 96 gigabytes of memory. It's loaded. This thing's ridiculous. And you can see the Radeon 8060S has 32 gigabytes of memory. It's sharing some of that system memory there. So that's all available. But that system memory is so fast, it's like, yeah. All right, as far as the network goes, people like to know this. It's the RTL8125. That's our 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapter. All right, there you have it. It's too warm for me to stay in this room any longer. Just note that this is, like I said, the fastest mini PC. I just want a fan curve so I can tune it up a little bit and get rid of some of the fan noise because it depends on what you're doing. But I don't want it to be ramping up all the time. But really, this, you know, CPU and GPU, it's time to start having some conversations about is this going to replace desktop GPUs in the future? Do you need a desktop GPU if you have something like this? You know, is it better to get this versus getting a, a less expensive mini PC with Oculink and then using a dock? I always like to have my stuff all in one piece, so that's what's nice about this, but it is a little bit bigger than like some of the small ones or laptops with Oculink or whatever else. Do they make any laptops with Oculink? Anyway, let me know what you think of this in the comments. And uh, anything else I wanna say about it? Hmm. No, it's just fast.